Uh, within Kakadu itself as a national park, uh, there is 683,000 hectares of wetlands and a pretty exact figure. So it's a pretty awesome spot. We do get hard hooved animals as well, buffalo, pigs, horses. On occasions, agile wallabies can be seen, but at the moment with the water levels where they are, a little scarcer at this stage. But they can come down to where the water source is here. On to our right, in turning up in large numbers, uh, one of our migratory birds. Now they will migrate from wetlands uh, around Australia, particularly along the east coast, aiming for really shallow sections. And uh, most of the day, this is where you'll find whistling ducks. Anyone from France today? Yeah, so you're looking at that. Le Grand Crocodile. Uh, it's about four metres. Well, interesting. Uh, I couldn't tell you exactly. It'll be an uneducated guess because yeah. I'd have to actually yeah. kill this animal to get an exact figure. But we estimate it could be somewhere between 30 and as much as 35 years old. The only way to tell for sure is to take a sample of its bones. Yeah, uh, through, the bone, through the bones, it's like dating a tree. You get, uh, you'll take the growth rates to give you an accurate age. There you go. I'll see if I can just sort of ease in a little bit closer for you. No. 1.4 metres tall and have a wingspan of around 2.5 metres when in flight. Huge thing. Australia's only true stalk as well. This one is a male. And the easiest way to distinguish male from female is the colour of its eye. See how they're both black? Females will have a distinct yellow ring around their eye, almost fluorescent in colour. What is this one? Maybe in Colorado. Very fibrous bark crushed down with leaves, quite a lengthy process in how they do that, but it's ground down to a pulp, placed in small dilly bags. Now this actually works effectively in small pockets of water, uh, usually smaller billabongs of waterways. Also found here in the top end, and uh, some of the suggestions as to where it may have arrived, uh, Macassans uh, thousands of years ago, having uh, may have potentially had food exchanges with local bidding clans of the time, from the coastlines of Indonesia, here. Look at the, her neck, it is a female. It's a little kink, and uh, it's what they call a hinge vertebra. It just gives the bird the ability to actually thrust its head forward in order to strike. Then it, uh, it will come up, a fish stuck on the end of its bill, and it's actually got to flip it off the bill like a pancake in order to swallow. suggested that there's around five saltwater crocodiles for every square kilometre of, of National Park. So somewhere up to about 100,000. <coughs> Nearly double that across Northern Australia. Jabaroo, airborne, the puppy heads. Going from right to left. Huge wingspan. Kakadu was actually a mispronunciation of another word, Gagashu.
We're still kind of like uh, reinventing ourselves. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it is my pleasure this morning to introduce you to, as I mentioned last night, to senior elders on the Kakadu Board of Management and traditional owners for Kakadu National Park and in this area in particular. I have Mr. Alfred Niangle, who is a senior from the Manilidar clan, and also Mr. Michael Bungaram, who is a senior from the Morawan clan. This morning, um, <clears throat> what we're going to do is take you up through both the Rainbow Serpent Gallery and also the main gallery here. Just wait to get everybody a bit closer. Yeah, that's the problem. And I thought so. No, 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 Welcome to the Rainbow Serpent Gallery. My name's Sarah, and I'm here on behalf of the traditional owners and parks. Um, and the talk that I normally give to people here is about the creation era. And the Rainbow Serpent is one of the creation ancestors and kinship and how the creation, um, the rainbow serpent relates to this concept of kinship. So the rainbow serpent, you can imagine a landscape that is flat, featureless. The rainbow serpent <coughs> moved through the country and as she moved through country she created the landscape. So she created the rocks, rivers, rock holes, floodplains, all the features of the landscape. There's another creation ancestor as well, Wadamurungundi. Michael, I don't know if I say this right. Wadamurungundi, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, the Earth Mother. The Earth Mother, yeah. The Earth Mother. And she came up out of the ocean. Yeah. She came from the ocean. From the, ocean. the north. She brought with her dilly bags. Okay. And in her dilly bags she carried gifts. Okay. She brought a digging stick. She could move away. And as she moved through the country mm -hmm. with her digging stick, she made freshwater she made springs. A and she also brought her spirit children. And her spirit children became the first people. So she moved through the country, she placed her spirit children on land, on country. And she gave these first people language, culture, kinship, and all the laws to live by.